Hello and welcome to the next tutorial. Now a few of you have asked me to show you how to make a function um, to allow you to basically play the game again. So I've got a nice neat little solution here to show you. So first what I'm going to do is make a game over function. And to do that I've just used the keyword def as you can see here, a space and then I've called it game over, seems logical and open and close the brackets, put a colon. Now again, as always, if you hit enter, you get the correct amount of indentation. So do remember to put the colon here. Then we've got a print line saying game over. And then I'm calling a play again function, which I'll walk you through now. So what will happen when you use the game over function, it will go to this, print this line, and then immediately jump to the play again function. So here we have the play again function. As before, keyword def, a space, I've called it play again, open and close brackets, and the colon. As you can see, it's all indented here nicely. Now this may confuse you, but you need this. What you need to do is reset the health value back to its starting point. I, so to do that, you make the health variable global. So you put the keyword global a space and then health. We tell the computer to reset the health variable to 4. I've changed this to a lower variable uh, value just so you can see this working nicely. But you, you can choose whatever you'd like here as a starting value. Then I've got a print line saying would you like to play again? I'm using answer as a variable and I'm taking input from the keyboard. So I've got the keyword input and open and close brackets. Now this is the clever bit. I've got an if statement here. So the if is indented exactly the same as the rest of these lines. So if, then we're using the variable answer. Remember that's a box in memory where we've stored whatever the user has answered to this question. And I've said if the answer double equals, remember to check if it's equal to something, open up your speech marks and I've put yes in here close the speech marks and a colon. Now again if I hit enter here it shows me the correct indentation for the if statement so this has to be indented a little bit further than the rest of the code. Let's go backspace there. There we go. So basically if they say yes they want to play again this will take them back to the start room function which is the beginning of our adventure. So it works perfectly. Now, obviously, they may say no, they don't want to play again. So I've got an else here, a colon. Remember, with an else, you don't have to put a condition because it will run the code if anything other than yes is typed in. I'm printing, just to be polite, thanks for playing to the screen. Now, here's the bit of code you'll have never seen before. This is sys dot, so that's a dot, not a, not a comma, it's a full stop, and then the word exit, all lowercase, all of this lowercase, and then open and close brackets. Now what this line is doing, it's telling the program that whatever else you're doing, stop it and end the program. Now to use this, we have to import some code. Now that sounds complicated, but actually it's really simple. What we do, right at the top of the file, very first line of code, we write the keyword import, that's I-M-P-O-R-T, a space, and then S-Y-S. -S. It's short for system. And once we've done that, we can then use the bit of code down here that says sys.exit, open and close brackets. And this will basically stop the game in its tracks, and it will end it, just like we want. However... If we're running this within idle, which is you know, the GUI that we're using to write our code, we have to add one more bit of code so that the program doesn't throw an error when it exits. So, right at the bottom of your code, just before the start room, where we're calling it to start the game, we put the keyword try, T-R-Y, colon, and then whenever you see the colon, remember it's going to be indented by one tab. Or, if you're clever, when you write that in the code, just hit enter. 
gives you the correct indentation. We write the word start room with the open and close brackets and then not indented at the very edge of the screen except so that's e x c e p t space system capital s this time and for the exit a capital e another colon and the keyword pass now you don't have to understand this code fully but basically what this is doing is telling the program to try to go to the start room unless system exit has been called and if system exit has been called which is basically here the word pass just basically says ignore any error messages that might be generated because we haven't actually reached the end of the code so this is a bit of protecting code really that stops any errors being thrown when we exit the game before all the codes finished running okay that's what that does and once you've got this you'll be able to get the player to play the game again and you can use this bit of code you know elsewhere in other functions as well to stop the game from running to end it so if the character you know dies for example you can just end the game and it works perfectly now there's one other bit I've done up here which I'm going to talk you through now before when we run the program it just went through line by line by line without anything really fun happening so what I've done here is I've given you the choice in the game whether you want to fight the troll again or not after the first attack so now in start room what's happening we enter a room so you're in a dark cave you get attacked by a troll bummer it goes to the attack function and up here what's happening we're setting all of the variables to be global we're minusing some health value off and we're saying now this is a new line of code if the health so that's the player's health is less than or equal to zero so that's saying you know once it goes to zero or below kill the character basically colon and then again indented game over so basically what this attack function is now doing don't forget the open and close brackets there by the way it's saying that if the character's health goes below a certain point go to the game over function which is here and then after you've printed game over go to the play again function and ask them if they want to play again okay now coming back to the start room function what I've got here I've got a line saying print would you like to fight or to run so this gives them the option I've made a variable called fight and put the equals input open and close brackets and remember this storing if they type in fight fight will be stored within the fight variable if they type in run run will be stored in here okay so now I'm using an if-else statement so if space the variable called fight double equals open up your speech marks is equal to the text fight close the speech marks colon we then print the troll attacks again and we go to the attack function by just calling it attack open and close brackets and that will obviously start the attack over again and then it will print out how much health you've got left with this line here now the else part of it now do be careful with your indentation here remember space between the edge of the screen with an if and else they have to be on the same level and as you can see in my code they are so be careful of this with your code don't put the else there it has to be there otherwise the code won't work properly okay again I've got a colon and then I've put print you run away and live to fight another day and then I'm taking you to the game over function which again will end the game and ask if you want to play again so it just adds another level to the game and starts to make it more interesting so you can incorporate this code in your game and then you can have more realistic battles I'll show you something else in the next tutorial uh, because we can also give the troll a health value or the whatever monster or character you want to have and we can also then allow you to win the game so for example 
once the troll health goes below zero, the troll dies and yeah, you progress onwards. Let's have a look at this code running though, just to see how it works. So, run module, save it, you can just F5 it. Here we go, you're in a dark cave, suddenly a troll attacks you. You have two points left, so that's two health points. Would you like to fight or run? Well, I'm going to... Sorry, I just hit enter by accident there, take that out. I'm going to type that I'm going to fight. There we go, the troll attacks again. So I've lost my two health points, my health is now zero, so the game is over. And would I like to play again? I'm going to type, yes, I want to play again. See, code works perfectly. So, I've been attacked, I've got only two health points, so I know if I attack, I'm going to, well, bite the dust. So this time, I'm going to run, and, hey presto, I live to fight another day, game's over, would I like to play again? This time I'm going to type no, tells me thanks for playing, and the game ends. All works perfectly. Have a go next at incorporating this code into your game. So you can choose, it doesn't have to be a troll, it can be whatever you want. Um, try and get this code incorporated into your game and working just to take your adventure game you know, to that next level. Have a go and then watch the next tutorial where I'll show you how to make a health variable for the troll and also we'll look at making a high score system, making some points for the game as well. Thanks for watching. See you soon.